waxes and wanes, the planets that whirl around the sun, the galaxies that wink from afar. In the darkness we call out, let there be light. And the universe is filled with heavenly light. You are our creator too. The one who formed us and who forms us still. May your word of truth ring out today with your call to new life. Amen. Creator of heavenly life, there is no shadow in your divine light. It remains unchanging across the eons, even as the stars come and go. You are our faithful creator, the gardener of our lives. You plant your truth within us and inspire lives of caring and love. We honor and worship you. Amen.
James tells us in the very first chapter that we are to be hearers to listen and doers of God's word. And later on, James will tell us that works without faith are dead. So, do you have any idea what that means? You don't? So if your mom and dad or somebody here at church or at school says to you, I want you to listen, do you know why they want you to listen? said was, because you probably weren't paying attention, or if a quiz comes up, you would know the answers if you were paying attention. <coughs> yeah. And that's true, but when I say, listen, I want you to hear what I'm going to say, because I think it's important. James is saying, be hearers of God's word. So we should listen to what God tells us, right? He says, be doers, because he wants us to do something we hear what we're supposed to do, right? It's kind of like your words and your actions have to line up. If I say, Ebenezer, you are a good boy, and you go out and you punch somebody, But if I say to you, Ebenezer, you are such a good boy, and I know that you are going to do good things, and you go out and you help someone. Or help someone. You, know, you can help someone cross the road. You can help someone with a math problem or a reading problem or say, Say we're reading along here and, and I don't know what that word says. Do you know what this word is? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna help you. So what does this what does PH say? What's it sound like? Mm -hmm. And what's an A sound like? Fair. What's it R? Er. 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 Fair. Pharisees, see, you can, I helped you, you know what a Pharisee is? Mm -hmm. A Pharisee was kind of like a, a religious person that really looked down on Jesus and wanted to know who Jesus was, and he kept telling them that they were with them. Right? That's a Pharisee. So, <clears throat> we can help each other, we can help each other with reading, we can help each other with work, we can help each other with a project, there's lots of ways we can help each other. But in James's text today, he says to help orphans and widows. Do you know what an orphan is? What's an orphan? Mm -hmm. Doesn't have a mom or a place to live? Mm -hmm. Doesn't have a family? Mm -hmm. No, they don't. And who, who are the widows? People who used to be married, but the, their husband or wife died. And it's usually, they're referring to a widow as the woman and the widower as the man, right? Okay. So those people don't have the means that they had before when two people work together, right? So why do you think we should help orphans and widowers? They probably went through a lot of your right? And I think that's a good thing for us to remember when we use our words, because words can be hurtful or they can be helpful, right? And we never know what somebody's going through. Okay? Let's pray. Lord, we give you thanks for the words and the vocabulary that you have given to us. Help us to use those words 
to glorify you. And Lord, help us to see the things that need to be done that match our words and our actions so that they will know we are Christians. Amen. Our scripture text comes from the epistle of James, the first chapter beginning with verse 17 through 27. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that he, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves in an ongoing way, immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the, perf into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious, do not bridle their tongues, but deceive their hearts. The religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for the orphans and the widows in their distress, and to keep oneself unstained by the world. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. God, you are ever faithful, and you create each of us to be a presence of healing and love in your world. You equip us to resist intentions and actions that are hurtful, hurtful to ourselves and others. Lord, forgive us when we forget your desire for us. Forgive us when we put aside your vision. Remind us of the love and goodness that you have planted within us. And Lord, draw our hearts close to you and bless us as we live in your ways, the ways of righteousness. Amen. As we begin the epistle of James, we know that this book was written mainly for Jewish readers in mind. They were people that were modest. They had modest means, and they were oppressed often by the rich. The rich would bring them to court and file judgments against them, and they felt that they were blasphemed by the honorable name in which the believers were called. And they kept back the wages of these believers. James counsels patience, and then he calls them to remember that the Lord ultimately sets things right. I think each and every one of us longs for the Lord to set things right, not only in our lives, but in the world in which we live in. James is the brother of Jesus who came to lead this Jerusalem church. James addresses their temptations. And he says, count it all you, because the testing of your faith produces endurance. He counsels prayer for wisdom, and he says that prayer and faith without doubts is what really counts. He tells those who are tempted that they will be blessed, and that they will endure temptations, and they will receive the crown of life, because God 
tempts no one. Many of us grew up with the nursery rhyme, sticks and stones may break my bones, but what's the rest of it? Words will never hurt me. Is that true? Is that a true nursery rhyme? No, it is not. It is not at all. Words have power and words have meaning. And when we use our words wisely, they can equip, encourage, and help us. But when we don't, they hurt and they tear us down. How many of you have ever read the book, The Miracle Worker? Okay, that's your assignment for next week. Just kidding. Helen Keller was born deaf and blind. And after a long struggle, she comes to understand the power of words. And it was in the climax of the movie, The Miracle Worker, and in the book, when Helen and her teacher, Amy Sullivan, have a breakthrough. Amy records the moment in her memoirs. She says, quote, this morning, while she was washing, she wanted to know the name for water. I spelled W-A-T-E-R. How many of you know the sign language for W? W-A-T-E-R. Can you do that? <clears throat> she didn't think any more about it until after breakfast. Then it occurred to me that with the help of this new word, she just might succeed. We went into the pump house, then I made Helen hold her mug under the pump, and she pumped the pump. You know the one I'm talking about? The one with the handle and the spigot and it goes down into the what? Yeah, okay. And as the cold water gushed forth, filling the mug, I spelled again the word water. W-A-T-E-R in Helen's free hand. The word coming so close upon the sensation of that cold water rushing over her hand seemed to startle her. She dropped the mug and stood transfixed. And all of a sudden, a new light came over her face. She spelled the word water several times. And then she dropped to the ground and asked for its name and pointed to the pump and the trellis. And suddenly, she asked for my name. And I spelled teacher. Just then, the nurse brought Helen's little sister to the pump house and Helen spelled the word baby and pointed to the nurse. All the way back to the house, she was excited to learn the names of every object that she touched. So in a few hours, she had added 30 new words to her vocabulary. I don't know any better example than this story to it illustrate the power of words. Did you see Ebenezer's face when I said, here, let me help you sound out this word, Pharisees? Did you see his face? Words have power. The same exact excitement and enthusiasm and vigor comes to each one of us when we are touched by the Word of God. When we come to understand God's love and His grace for us and the message that He gives us in understanding why Jesus Christ came. How God sent His Savior for you and for me. The message of God's love is uplifting. It helps us to bear our burdens and to know that Christ died for our sins and yet he promises us eternal life. Faith makes us joyful and at peace 
with God and with each other. And it makes us love God and one another. James is an important book about how we can live out our faith. It's written for people who already know and love the Lord. We can use the book of James to help us remember to be doers and hearers of God's word. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. I don't care who you are. That's good advice to live by. Ben Sirach, in the book Ecclesiastes, which is found in the Greek Old Testament, but not in the Hebrew, says much of the same thing. Be quick to hear and deliberate in answering. Shema, a great rabbi who lived the same time that Jesus walked the face of the earth, cautioned. He said, say little and do much. The American Indians have a proverb, listen or your tongue will keep you deaf. James is telling all of us not to just be hearers of God's word, but be doers of God's word. He also writes about those who let their tongues get in the way of them. He says, if anyone considers himself or herself to be religious and does not bridle their tongue, the religion is in vain. As James writes, we will hear him use the word bridle and bit to help us understand that we're supposed to keep our tongue under control. James writes to remind Christians that the tongue can be a source of mischief and hurt and that it needs to be bridled at times. Don't you remember the last time that words were hurtful. The tongue can praise God and tell others about Jesus, and in the same breath, that same tongue can curse and swear and lie and deceive. I once heard a friend who was a pretty smooth talker trying to get this girl to go out with him. And all of a sudden, he turned around and he started cussing. And the only thing that I could say to him was, you kiss your mom with that mouth. And I think to myself now, I, caught, I probably could have said that better, but it really shocked me to see words that were so persuasive on one hand, and then the words that were so decisive and cut on the other hand. Let me just ask you, are your conversations and world words helping to put you and others right before the Lord? Is this an area in your life where you might need a little help? I know some people have said to me over the years, I don't feel comfortable talking to people about Jesus. I don't feel comfortable saying, well, I'll put you on the prayer list at church. We need to stop and think about what we say and how we say it because words have an impact on other people. Some good and some not so good. Sometimes we miss opportunities. But knowing that our words do have power, we need to be mindful of the words that we use. I've also been made aware that some people will say they'll do something, but then they never follow through. James reminds us that our words and actions, both words and actions, are important. James tell us, tells us that we must be doers of God's word, not only hearers. And you know why? Because God calls us to a higher calling. He calls us to rise above the ordinary. Because we are Christ's 
ambassadors. We are supposed to be imitators of Jesus Christ. James says, of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. In other words, God gives us this opportunity for rebirth, to become his children. And he wants us to be just like our Father. He's saying, I have created you in my own image. Now live as if you were my child, because you are. Secondly, God expects our actions to make a difference in the lives of other people. We can't help other people know Christ unless it's obvious that we know him ourselves. Our responsibility as a Christian is to help other people to grow closer to Christ and to develop a personal relationship with him. How many of you know the mission of the United Methodist Church? You can say it with me. To make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Let's all say that together. To make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. How can we do that unless we ourselves are disciples? Edgar Guest captured the idea in a few words. He said, I'd rather see a sermon than hear one. I'd rather see a sermon than hear one any day. I'd rather one should walk with me than merely tell me the way. Hmm. I think that's true for me. What about you? In other words, what we do speaks louder than what we say. If we want to tell others about Christ, we need to show them and tell them where Christ is in our life. If we want to show them what Christ has done in our lives, we must be able to show them where Christ has shown up. What are your words and actions saying to someone else? Are they matching up? God expects a lot from us, but he also provides for us. God gives us strength when we think that we don't have the strength to do something. Most of us have had a variety of tasks to do in our jobs over the years. And one of the things that I've learned is that you cannot require someone to do a job unless you provide the resources. They just can't get the job done without the resources. When God calls us to be doers of the world, he also gives us the resources necessary to do the job. And that doesn't mean that he gives us everything that we want, but he does give us what we need. He helps us along the way. You know, when you get that nudging to say something to somebody that you don't know in the grocery store, or to instead of cuss somebody out that cuts you off, instead you say, God bless you, you must be really in a hurry today. Right? He gives us that ability. We have the ability to cuss them out or we have the ability to bless them, right? God has also given us the ability to learn and to work and to earn money. And what I do with my money reflects my stewardship. In other words, how I spend that money reflects what I value and appreciate. When I appreciate the person that God has created me to be, as well as the abilities that he's given me, I use what I purchase to glorify God. Hang in there with me. You have abilities. God-given abilities. And when we use these abilities, let's say one of the first things that we do as a teenager, help me out here, Lance, is to get a job, and then we get our temps, and then we take driver's ed, if we, is that right? 
Am, have I got the right progression? And then we get enough hours, and we go and we take our driver's test. Are you following me? So we have all that we need. We have the education. We have the means. We've gotten our, our driver's test. And then we start off usually with a vehicle that maybe our parents have helped us purchase. Are you ready to purchase a car yet? Not yet. Okay. So you might need a little help from some outside sources, right? So we might have another pot up here for Atlanta. But anyway, we start off with a vehicle that we probably have not completely purchased ourselves. And so let's face it. When you're a teenager, you don't think too much about God being in the equation. Until, until you have a few close moments in that car. I can remember the first time it snowed and I was away from home. I prayed the whole time going home. Anybody been there? <laughs> but someday, someday, when you are standing before God, God isn't going to ask you what the make and model of your first vehicle was. What do you think God's going to ask you? What did you use that car for? Who did you take in that car to church with you? Who did you go to the grocery store and pick up some items for? How you use what God gives you is important. What did you do to honor me with the abilities and the gifts and the strength that I gave you? Have you ever thought about a car helping you to be a doer of God? What about your home or your education or your experiences? When God calls you and I to be doers of the world, he also gives us the resources necessary to do the job. Now, this is just off the cuff. This morning, I knew I was going to do a lot of talking before Mickey and I even sang together. And it was kind of a spur-of-the-moment thing, to be honest. We've wanted to sing together, but we took this opportunity to do it. So I thought to myself, you know what? I have some cough drops, and I don't want to have to be drinking something in the middle of, of um, singing. So I popped a cough drop in my mouth before I sang, and it was like, boy, did that work well. I had a lot to swallow, right? But I thought to myself, hmm, what if I hadn't have done that? I wouldn't have been able to even get through the song, most likely. But God gives us the resources and the knowledge to do what God has called us to do. There's something else that I notice. God doesn't always give us everything that we need up front. Sometimes he expects us to take a leap of faith. Maybe it's just a step, but eventually it will be a leap. An old German proverb says, begin to weave and God will give you the thread. I had to laugh when I read this proverb. How many of you crochet or knit? It doesn't take long for somebody to notice if you use yarn. Because pretty soon, everybody's leftover or unused yarn becomes your property. I had this huge box of yarn because I started making afghans and different things or whatever. And then I just put it down and I put it in the box. Because I kept getting all this yarn. And I didn't know what to do with it all. It seems like when you start... All of a sudden, you have an abundance. So if anybody needs yarn, see me afterwards. Indeed, God blesses our faithfulness. Have any of you read about Truett Cathy? No, that is not backwards. The last name is Cathy. Do you, any of you know who that is? Please? Mm -hmm. Chick-fil-A on a good job. 
the founder and CEO of Chick-fil-A. Kathy founded his country and his company in 1964, and it has grown to number three nationally in fast food sales. His corporate goal is highly non-traditional, and it reads, to glorify God by being a faithful steward of all that is entrusted to us, and to have a positive influence on all who come in contact with Chick-fil-A. Would you say they're doing a good job? How many of you eat there? Kathy is a man of deep Christian faith and a faith that shapes his decisions. He helps his employees. For example, he's given $1,000 scholarships to nearly 8,000 part-time employees. He sponsors five foster homes in Brazil and in the U.S. He gives away millions of dollars in scholarships at Barry College. He provides support for summer camps. And he has taught Sunday school class for 13-year-old boys for, for over 30-something years. Don't expect to eat at a Chick-fil-A on what day of the week? Sunday. They are closed. They lock the doors to bear witness to Kathy's conviction that God created us to need a day of rest. And when people question the policy, he says that the policy helps to attract employees who want to attend church on Sunday. He also notes that his restaurant generates more sales in six days than most do in seven. An example of putting your faith in practice. Len Gay, an operator of the Chick-fil-A restaurant in Annapolis, says his Christianity functions in business and outside of business. He says Kathy is a doer of the word, not only a hearer, and God has blessed his faithfulness. James says, but he who looks into the perfect law of freedom and continues, continues not being a hearer who forgets, but a doer of the work, this person will be blessed in what they do. And that's in chapter 1, verse 25. Friends, that is a promise. Amen. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him and earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our enemies, and we have not heard our right in the need. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. At the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. Delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by the Lord and the Spirit. 
On the night in which he gave himself up, he took bread, he gave thanks to you, he broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, he gave thanks to you, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is the, my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sins, do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and all these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood, by your spirit, Make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your Son, Jesus Christ, and with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. This is the body of Christ, broken for you. Take, eat, and remember. This is the blood of Christ, shed for you. Take, drink, and remember.
conclusion. Live a righteous life. Be a good listener. Use your words wisely. Act in ways that others know that you are Christ's ambassadors. Be hearers and doers of God's word. Amen.